Hmm. My life. What's up? <laughs> hey, Sam. Cool. I haven't really done these lives before and I'm checking it out and it's cool that I see everybody pop in because I'm seeing lots of people I know but haven't seen for a while. What's up, Mike Koch? The man. My mom is here. <laughs> Some Texas Cubers, what's up guys? What's up? Let's see, okay. Is this a notification saying Felix is requesting in? Yes, it is, okay. Let's do it. What's up? <laughs> All right. It's not good. Cool. Yeah, I mean, I don't really have a setup. Let me try, like, putting something on my laptop, maybe. I didn't want to hold my phone. Yeah, I mean, that's smart of you to think of that. I didn't. Um, yeah, let's just do it like that. I think that'll work. How about that? Perfect. Okay, what Perfect. time is it in Australia? From, from, any, from any angle, you look good, Anthony. Um, the time, the time is, uh, time is midday. I okay. just had some, yes. And in Texas, or no, not Texas. I don't know. Texas or NYC or Canada, wherever that, wherever the hell you are. <laughs> uh, yeah. It would be East Coast. So it's like nine. Uh, in Texas, it's nine. Um, I'm in the New York City area right now, so it's ten. But yeah. nice. Well, what's your like frame of reference to like make that conversion? Um, uh, chatting with all sorts of people around the world for like such a long time, you you just know when people are awake. Like, well, I know I know like LA is plus seven or eight because I did a bunch of stuff on calls with like. Max and his parents. So I know I just add eight hours and then we'll subtract a day and then it's a bit more for the East Coast. But I have like, in the morning, no Europeans are awake and in, at night, no no Americans are awake from, from my time zone. It's, uh, gotcha. Yeah, that's, that's a weird one. Um, you did mention a couple things though that I want to shout out. First is Australia. I went for the first time for Worlds and Melbourne is awesome. So... Shout out to your hometown. And then as far as Max goes, okay, like it just has to be said. Um, yeah, the speed cubers, badass, man. Like, it's like, it's so good. Um, I've had people uh, like that aren't cubers, people I don't know, like, you know, they see me with a cube and like, man, there have been times where like weird Rubik's Cube videos or like fake Rubik's Cube videos or like gimmicky stuff has like gone viral and taken off. And then for the next like month, I constantly, oh, did you see that guy that did that thing? And I'm like, yeah, and you just kind of got to humor it. You know what I mean? But like, yeah. right now, nice. you're all like, oh, I saw this thing on Netflix. And I'm like, yes, yes, that is right. <laughs> yeah, no, the, um, the response has been, has been pretty cool. They, I mean, the, the editors and the producers and the whole team did uh they they made it they made it what it was basically. Well, but they made it. Like they made they made it an amazing documentary. But the reality is, they had some crazy meat to work with for the story between you and Max. Like, you know, like you're super humble. Everybody in this chat knows that. But you are the man, and honestly, Max is completely incredible. So, yeah, I just I loved it, and people like literally people have told me they cried. Like a lot of people are like, I cried. Oh yeah, <laughs> I think that's uh, that's what they were going for. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, I do. I do feel kind of bad in that, or at least some people are like, oh, they get upset when Philip wins, kind of thing. Like, oh, don't don't feel it to me. Like, I'm I like I don't like that part of it. 
um, how oh, it's wait, kind of... What exactly? What exactly do you not like about it? That people, people kind of think, well, I don't know, actually, Philip doesn't get much airtime, which is kind of interesting. I think that's a function of they only had like 40 minutes to work with. Um, but that would have been kind of nice to see because as we and everyone also knows, he's a lovely, lovely guy as well and very, very funny. Um, and so it would have been cool to see him there. But I mean, yeah, so it's kind of balancing that out with like, okay, they're only, they only have cameras on me and Max. They don't have like 16 different like camera crews to film everyone's, everyone's story. So I don't know. It, okay. it was interesting. I would, I would have liked to see Philip um, a bit more. Yeah. If, but, I, yeah if, if they don't have any of the background or any of the pre-filming or anything. They only have his, his kind of final solves and reaction and, and, an, and, and an interview. Right. I, I think it worked well for the narrative they had, but totally like, yeah, I, I you know, because a few people have said, oh, like, okay, people have been in two, two camps. There's the one camp that's like, I guess they just, they get super invested in the Felix and Max story. And then like the fact of how it plays out in your camaraderie, like they're in tears. And then the other camp of people I've spoken to, including a couple people last night, he was like, oh yeah, I saw this Netflix stuff. And I was like, yeah, yeah. And he was talking about it for a second. And he's like, yeah, but ah, they didn't win. <laughs> so, like, they're the people who like have the expectation that you guys are like, you know, the greatest, which is true. It's absolutely true. Um, but obviously in terms of competition, anything can happen the day of. And okay, m correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't the difference between first place and like sixth place, like 0 0.08, something like that? Uh, first was Philip 674, then Nam had, uh, wait, so it was Philip 674, Sean Patrick 679, Sebastian 683, Max 684, me 685, Nam 686. Yeah. <laughs> that is nuts. That's ludicrous, man. Like, that is like, uh, like an analogy that I've used for years is comparing like cubing and the progression and the times and everything to swimming. Um, Cause you know, over time as hardware is improved with swimming, which, you know, has been a thing with their equipment and then training and all of that stuff, they have improved, but then you can highlight any specific moment in time. And sure you have guys like Michael Phelps and Felix Zemdegs that are like, crazy ahead of the competition at certain points in time but like eventually for the most part it's like the difference is so small when it comes to the reality of competition well in three by three <laughs> okay. three by three that is my thing so this whole discussion we can leave everything else out it's three by three <laughs> yeah no yuri yuri asked a good question in the chat i'm Kind of trying to focus on the chat at the same time as over here. Oh, I, you see, this is, I'm a rookie. I haven't even been looking, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my mom says hello. Your mom? What's up? My mom, my mom is in the chat, and I know my mom will want me to say hi to your mom, so hi. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell her that. My, my door is shut. Okay, um, okay. No, asked, were the producers, like, upset that you, like, or annoyed that you or Max didn't win? And what I, what I told them, right from the outset, I'm like, okay, like, me and Max, we have uh, some some reasonable probability of winning, you know, maybe, like, 25% chance each of winning. Um, and they're like, no, 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 one of you guys will win, one of you guys will win. Like, no, like, you don't understand. Like, very more than likely someone else wins. Like, even though we have some probability, like, reasonable probability, you need to, like, have in mind that whatever happens, like, that will affect your whole story, basically. Like, if, if, if Max wins, me win, or or someone else wins. And so I made that, like, they, they like, they're like, oh, no, you're, you're, you're fine. Like, what are you, wait, but yeah, I kind of said, no, you need a plan for everything. And to be honest, I, I've said this a few times, I think the ending is perfect. As from a story perspective, as opposed to, like, I think it, it, if Max wins, it's a little bit boring. If I win, it's kind of cool. But the way it, it worked, ended up was, um, I think, the best for for their for their movie purposes, totally. Because they were saying, "Oh, when when it was all over, we we're like, oh no, what do we do now?" But then, as they were piecing it all together, they're like, "This is perfect." Yeah.
that was, that was the perfect length of a uh, side note from you because it gave me a chance to scroll through the comments. So I'm caught up now. I'm caught up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, so yes, and that's been keeping me busy. I can imagine. Yeah. Um, so like going into this, um, initially I was like, okay, um, I guess I want to come up with questions, specific questions or whatever. Um, I but, do any and I well, <laughs> you sure people do any Great. Because where yeah. I'm going with this is I'd rather just not, and I'd rather just roll with this because you and I have had like so many great cubing related conversations and outside of cubing too, but cubing related conversations, like, like all over the world in person. Like, I know a lot of cubers communicate a lot online all the time. I haven't really been like that since like the early days of cubing with speed solving forum and you know, all that stuff. Like I was super active back then, not so much now, but like, I was just thinking about some of the conversations we've had over the years, like everywhere from like Brazil to Prague to Hong Kong. Like, oh, I was going through my, my pictures in my phone the other day. And okay, so we were both in Hong Kong, which had nothing to do with cubing. We just happened to both be passing through at the time. Um, and I have videos on my phone of us out that night. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and like talking to um just random people I, I, like i did some cubing stuff for them while you're watching and then a little vice versa and man that's like gold gold so a anyway um where i was I would, I would, yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd say the exact same like i guess at the start for the first uh yeah let's say four or five years of cubing i was you know racing people online all the time, chatting with people in all sorts of, you know, places, whether it's forums or chat rooms or everything, just all about cubing all the time. Yeah, yeah. And, and it was super, super online. And then over kind of the next five years, it developed to, okay, much more just see people and chat with them in person. Um, and even when chatting online to, I guess, the people I know and whatnot, it's less and less about cubing and, like, I haven't raced anyone. Oh, okay, I race Leo sometimes, but I well, don't really race. You, didn't you race Bill today? Wasn't that a thing? Oh, that was a monkey league. Yeah, yeah. That was, How did but that it's go? Uh, we, we were both pretty trash, but I managed to get the win. Okay, okay. <laughs> That's cool. Um, but no, I just meant, like, casually just, I don't know, I don't spend too much time just chatting about cubing all day, um, as I did in the past. Um, and now it's just much more, yeah, see people in competitions learn stuff from Jay at competitions well, when they happen. And uh, it's, it, it's kind of changed. But I, I know I can see online now, like, it, it's the exact same thing. Like, everyone, everyone who's, you know, 12, 13, 14, 15, or whatever, they're just cubing and chatting and Skyping online all the time, which is, yeah, that's epic. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, now, now I'm, like, going into the rabbit hole of memories right now. And I think I think something that would be cool to address is, like, Okay, I started cubing. I learned to solve the cube in March 08, which was like right around, I think we started at like the same time. When did you start? Yeah, I say April. I, I, I remember it was a Sunday, but I need to look at which exact date. I don't really know. I remember it was a Sunday, either March or April 2008. Cool. Um, yeah, April default, so exact same time. Cool, yeah, yeah. And the only reason I know the exact date is because it was my brother's 10th birthday. So I've got that on lock. But uh, yeah, so when we came up in like 08, um, okay, so when I was like writing down questions or whatever, and I didn't really get to questions, but I did write down some like kind of ideas that I thought, okay, if we just kind of touch upon this stuff, it'd be cool to hit it. And one of the things that I was thinking about is like, okay, there are a few thoughts here, but like one is social media and another is like, clout and let me explain so back then in like 08 social media wasn't a thing we didn't have it like that might be weird for the like 14 year olds in this chat to hear but like facebook came out we hopped on facebook but like it was totally different than what it is now um and and yeah so back in the day and then the reason i mentioned clout is because like back then 
we weren't hopping on YouTube and idolizing people based on how many people followed them. Like the guys that I looked up to, and I'm sure you'd say the same, were like guys that were just like the best at whatever it is they're doing. You know what I mean? Like within the Rubik's Cube world, like the guys who are the top solvers, like it was just like, I mean, I remember the first time I met guys like Dan Cohen and Ro and Yu Nakajima. Like these were like epic things, you know what I mean? Um, and I watched this documentary, which I don't know if you've heard about yet. It's on Netflix, uh, After the Speed Cubers. This is like the next thing on must watch Netflix at the moment. But have you heard of The no. Social Dilemma? No. Okay, no. So it just came out and I'm definitely gonna go in on this for a second because the, all the people in the chat, you gotta hear this part. Um, it talks about like the social media game that's being played behind the scenes in terms of, okay, so like a lot of people are aware that these social media companies try and get you addicted to their apps. Like we've known that for a long time, but on a one thing. yeah, yeah, no one one thing. it's all good. I would be talking to chat, but I'll wait for Felix. So let me see. I'll actually answer a question for a moment. Let's see what's up. Ro is a beast. What's up, man? Also, I, I saw you say like Worlds 2015 was a blast. Like, yes, yes, it was. Yes, it was. What's up, Will? Let's see who else has been here? Sorry, I had to do it something. Um, go on. You were saying <laughs> well, I, you know, it's all good. I'll get back to it. I was looking at the chat and this person said, this is probably one of the stranger Felix interview things in a good way, of course. And I'm good with that. I'm good with that. <laughs> well, most of, the, most of the interviews and stuff that people ask me to do on YouTube, they're, they're generally pretty similar, some better than others. Uh, it's, it's kind of, you know, oh, what's, what's your favorite record? How do you start cubing? You know, who, who, do you, who did you look up to? Who's, who do you think's really good? That, that sort of stuff. Um, yeah. Not not generalizing too much. Some people like people do it. People do it different ways and they have different audiences. But generally, I find yeah a lot of stuff is pretty similar. Um, but you were saying about I guess the early <coughs> the well, early early social media, media, right? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, social media when I started and when, when you started was it was YouTube. It right. was YouTube. Yeah. And yep. so it was Yunakajima was. Yeah, you know, he, he he had a lot of a few viral videos, and a decent number of subscribers. Um, and like Eric had a reasonable number of subscribers as, as well. That that sort of thing. Um, but again, like you said, those those were the fastest. Those were the fastest people um, uh, yep. at the time. And, and real quick, I wasn't. Uh, I, I guess I hadn't finished my thought, but I wasn't hating on YouTube or like subscribers or whatever. Um, no, I actually really like. Like, I don't watch a lot of cubing YouTube these days, but. When I, when, I, when I do kind of tune in, it, it's fun to see some stuff. And guys that have been blowing up recently, like Dylan Wang or Jay Perm, as most of you guys might know him, like I knew Jay Perm before he was Jay Perm because he's from, he's from Vancouver. Um, and he's a cool dude. And, you know, I watched like a few of his videos and that's one thing. If, if any of you guys are like cubing YouTubers or YouTubers, um, like, I don't know. I, what I what I personally enjoyed from his content was he was like actually explaining stuff in a different way than it, it didn't it didn't feel like regurgitated content, which I think is like a lot of what's kind of out there. Like I watched his video on learning three style edges for blind. And that was the first time I was actually like, okay, I get this. Like I could figure this out if I took the time to. Um, so Anyway, that's a whole side tangent. But um, yeah, like back in the day when it wasn't being hooked on like a device all day long, because I will openly admit right now, I am way more addicted to like my phone and apps than ever before. And it's messed up and I'm trying to like fix this. And that's why this documentary was like, I've been thinking about this stuff for a while. And actually, if you guys go back on my Instagram, if you look at my captions on some of the posts, like I've been talking about this for years. But this documentary was just like, holy crap, like everything's explained. Right, right. Um, so firstly, on, on the YouTube stuff, um, then we can put that, leave that. But I, I, would, I would agree, like the guys, the people making good content and good videos now and 
have, who have audiences generally get that because they make good content, right? It's not like it's it's an easy formula and like um or not not formula like it's a, that that kind of makes sense and I, I like that and I think at least for me I love I love watching people well at least when I started as well it was like very very inspiring to see these you know super fast people with heaps of subscribers I guess it was that was kind of you know you'd watch the video you get into cubing, you'd love watching it and just put them on repeat and just practice solving. And so I guess I, I like that. It, it, it's inspiring in that way. Um, and then, yeah, well, I mean, similarly, like what I probably got Facebook like when I was 13 or 14. But to be honest, like through high school, like I, I barely used my phone. Like, I, again, yeah, it's different times and Definitely, people like were just on social media and stuff all day. But through, particularly through high school, I just, I don't know, I just can't kind of never really spent much time on my phone. Uh, yeah. But that certainly changed since then in the last what six, seven years. Right, and you're hitting it on the like on the head because the difference then and now, I mean, we didn't have access to the same stuff we do now. And you're saying you're hooked now, but you weren't then. I would be like. I'm so glad we grew up when we did because if I had access to this stuff and I was sucked in at a really young age, like, wow, like that would have, it's just not good. And I recognize that now because in high school, like that's one of the things I think is like really good about cubes. Like you get off your phone and you're just like in the zone and you're in your head and it's like, it's real life. It's not a screen. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah. I, I, I mean, I would do it. I'm, I'm not, Booked or whatever think on, on social media. Um, I'd, I'd like to think, um, but I still, you know, spend spend a lot of time on it versus when I did when I was younger. But you know, part of it, part of it is just I like using it to communicate because I have you know friends in different places around the world, and why I mean particularly when you're locked in your house um, for, <laughs> for six or seven months, you kind of you have to use some tool to communicate with people. Yeah. Yeah. So if, if it's for, for the purposes of, you know, connecting with people, um, I quite like it, quite powerful. Um, but yeah. I, can, I, I, I can love, I love the like optimism in your perspective because you are a very optimistic person. And I think I am too, generally speaking. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I read that, um, there was a statistic that said the average American during quarantine, and I think this was supposed to have been from like March to June or something like that. Uh, the average American was spending seven hours a day on their phone. Seven, yeah. seven hours a day. Like it's, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's not like addictive in terms of, oh, it's like kinda, you know, people get hooked every now and then it's like, wow, it's so easy to get sucked in. But anyway, I don't want to like keep hating on social media, but. Uh, yeah. yeah, no, I, yeah. I'm like super precious about my time and I like sleeping a lot. And so, I don't know, I'm like, whenever I kind of catch myself, oh, like wasting, wasting time, I guess. I'm like, no, what are you doing? Yeah, there's somebody in the chat said, like my screen time averages 11 hours a day. And I believe that. And that's the thing, like, I don't feel like, people really talk about that with another, like people aren't going around like, oh, like how much time are you spending on your phone? But we all have access to that data. And it was just a reality check, like, wow. And, and anyway, so back in the early days of speed solving, we used it to communicate just as you're describing, like prior to social media, which I think it, it was cool because it was a tool for that and for like spreading information. And I think all of those points you brought up are 100% valid and like amazing. Um, and you couldn't do that, you know, 50 years ago. So that's, that's awesome. But, you know, there, I forget what this is called, but there's a principle in like tech where when something new comes out, it's like used, used, used until it's abused. And then eventually people bounce back and it, they like, you know, rein it in a little bit. And I just think we're totally at that point with social media, 11 hours a day screen time. Like, come on, I'm not hating on you. I'm hating on all of us person in the chat, but it's just, I need it's crazy. I'll have to check what my screen time is. Do you want to check right now? How do I? If you, uh, just, uh, you have an iPhone? 
I have an Android, but I should be able to find it. Okay, yeah. Well, you're on your own with finding it because I don't know, but I'm sure it's there. And I can check the chat. Okay, yeah, no worries. It's going to take me too long. Yeah, it's all good. Um, yeah, yeah, it's very different. The way, the way I use I mean, I think it's probably similar the way I in, interact or engage with cubing online. It's generally pretty similar, like talking to people about cubing, sharing stuff and engaging with different groups and communities and stuff. So at the, at the high level, I don't think it's changed, but definitely a lot of other stuff has. Yeah. So some, somebody in the chat a little while ago said, can you teach me zeroing? So let's jump back for a second. I'm curious what you remember from this, but zeroing, like, do you remember the birth of zeroing, which has become this huge meme in the community since? Very, very vaguely. Um, it was like a speed solving thread, right? That you started. It was a speed solving thread. And oh, wait, I, I don't my, remember, my, like, I think this is an acronym. F-A-Z, F2L after zeroing, and then you made some, yeah, made some post about that's, that's a secret, that's secret to being fast or whatever. Yeah. And whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's so much, like, old stuff from back in the day that, like, I've forgotten about now, but when I go back and look at it, it's pretty cool. Um, yeah. Um, okay, so speaking of back in the day, one of the things I wanted to talk to you about here was ZB. ZB. And also, yes. there was like a lag on your end. I'm not sure. Are we good now? Slightly. How's that? Oh, is there a lag yeah. between my voice and the camera? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's been going on for like a minute or two. All right, let me, I'll rejoin. Okay, cool. Cool. <laughs> Let's see what happens. <laughs> What's up, man? I was looking yeah. at the request and there was no Felix, but there was a Bill Wang. Yeah, I'm stepping in for a second. You know, um, yeah, guys, I have 120 world records. <laughs> you know, just wake up and, and, and break some every day, but. No, nah, great, great conversation. Very, very much enjoying it. It's awesome. Cool, man. Uh, but uh, yeah, Felix just destroyed me in uh, in Monkey League like two hours ago. So he's he's been having a a very busy busy morning, I guess. What uh, what were the like better averages of five that you guys got? Oh, we were both like we were both actually doing quite bad. Uh, but is bad like, like getting like. Six four averages or no 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 it was like seven like six six nine seven something like that like actually all right I I, mean, I could do that come on man like, yeah it was like one on. of those things where like um what like the solve like one person would go first and we would alternate and like whoever went first we would do super badly and then whoever went second we would be like Pat this guy got like seven point five and then we would just get like a good solve because it's easy to beat right so it's like it's pretty funny but. Yeah, I, I won one set at least, so like it's it's cool. I'm I'm fine with that. Three three sets to one, not too bad, not too bad. Nice, yeah. that's cool. Cool. Well, uh, yeah, I just wanted to say hi real quick. I'll see if Felix has sorted his internet out. For sure. Thanks for uh, having me here. You know, glad to replace him for for two minutes. Well, for uh, sure, man. Yeah. Take care, guys. Yeah. All right. Cool. Oh, I just realized I have questions here, too. That's cool. All right, let's bring Felix back. Okay. Hey, good. cool. Yeah, we're good. Okay. It seems good to me now. Um, yeah, feels a good replacement. He's much cooler than me. Um, yeah, Bill, Bill, is, Bill is swagged out. I remember I saw somebody like post on, I don't remember if it was a video of Bill or his Instagram or what it was, but somebody posted something saying like, oh no, it was, okay, Bill in one of the early Monkey League races against Lucas, I did commentary, 
And then in the chat, people kept saying that Bill looks like a rapper. He looks like, you know, Rich Brian or something slagged out with like a he, chain. He wishes. It's he true. Wishes. It's true. <laughs> he wishes. <laughs> he does wish too. That's also true. That's also true. I mean, uh, yeah, that's cool. Um, so you were saying, what were you saying before? Uh, ZB. Yes, yes, Wait, yes. Okay, somebody asked a question that I noticed, which was, they said, did you invent ZB? So let me start there. I did not invent ZB. ZB has been around since like 2003. Um, and yeah, I, you know, I think we can chat back and forth about this, but I'll start with kind of starting back from like even before our time and what was going on with ZB. Because um, I've actually talked to all the guys who were like working on ZB in the early days and then middle game and all that. So in like 03, um, Ron Van Bruhem, so Bruhem is the B in ZB, as well as a Polish cuber. I'm not even gonna try and pronounce his name, but it's like, it starts with the Z and it, I think it's, yeah, it's, it's a crazy Polish name. Um, shout out to Poland. Uh, did you say who? I didn't say anything. Oh, okay, okay. I, I <laughs> yeah, so this Polish guy and Ron came up with the concept of ZB and posted about it. So because they created the idea and posted about it, it's named after them. So that's ZB. So as far as I know, neither of them ever really attempted to learn ZB. And then fast forward to like 2004, 2005, that's when Chris Hardwick was kind of going ham on ZB for a little while. And I, I can't remember exactly what his progress was, but he definitely learned like all of you and maybe all of T or most of T or something like that. And that was about as far as he got. Um, and then the next big name on the scene that was really pushing it for a while was Jason Baum. Do you remember Jason Baum? I remember, the, yeah, I remember the name in a few videos. Yeah, because he was, he was before our time where like, I mean, I don't even know Jason, he but I just remember. Nats. He won US Nats one year, right? Um, I don't think he won US Nats, but he had like NAR average. Yeah, maybe NAR, okay. Which was like 11.8 or something like that. So um, he was like one of the top three by three in blind solvers for a while. Um, and he, when I remember when I first got exposed to ZB, he had a website online that had like his algorithm for a few sets and it had a lot of like text where he was talking about his progression and stuff like that. Chris Hardwick kind of did the same thing. Um, and so from when I first saw this, it was already described by everyone in the community as the holy grail of speed cubing. So, I mean, you hear that and you're interested if you're a cuber, you know what I mean? So I, I was like really fascinated with the idea. And then it was like 09, maybe 2010, but I think it was like 09 when... Chris Tran was going really hard on ZB. And oh, yeah. man, I was looking this up the other day. And if you go back, if you look at Chris Tran's old videos of him doing ZB, both of us are in the comments from 10 years ago. <laughs> like, whoa! <laughs> and we're saying whoa to him getting like 18 second solves using ZB. Yeah. And we're freaking yeah. out. You know what I mean? Like, it, was, it was pretty nice when he, was, when he learned full ZB. And was using it. That was like, that was insane. Yeah, yeah, totally. And, and I, I love that we're talking about this right now because I'm trying to like give myself a fresh perspective on things. Um, because I've obviously been like super caught up in the ZD game for uh almost five years now, like of hardcore into it. Um, and I remember the first time I think we probably really spoke about it was um. Uh, 2016 in Prague. Uh, mm. I don't know what in particular you would remember from that, other except for the fact that um, I that was the first time I was already, I mean, I was using ZB. So I remember like I was chilling there on some steps with you and a bunch of cubers and I was like just solving with ZB. And that was like the first time that I think a lot of people were seeing what ZB, I mean, because, okay, at the time, I was not good at ZB, in my opinion, now or then, but I was definitely the best that anybody had ever been at using ZB consistently, like by far. But I still saw that there was a lot of room for improvement, you know what I mean? 
Um, so, yeah, um, yeah. Since then, like, I've kept working on it, and I've always spoken candidly with, like, you and really guys in person. Like, it was almost like every year there'd be major competitions, and I'd get to show up, kind of check in, see everybody, and then show you guys, like, kind of where I'm at. And for the first few years, it was rough, man, because even though I was, like, you know, pretty proud of the fact that, like, that was where I was, I would show you guys and it was like because I was one of the fastest guys and I was showing this to the fastest guys it's like there's an expectation that the speed is like there you know what I mean like so I, you know, it's true that's what I went through you remember <laughs> vaguely vaguely I just remember all of the Brooks last liner comments man I, no joke right now, I, I might post this in my story later, this, the, on my phone, my, my home screen background right now is, uh, it was a Twitch chat, and it, I guess it was one of the Monkey League things I was watching, and I mean, I did commentary for one of them, because it was Bill and Lucas, and I know both of them, I was like, okay, this is cool, I just thought it would be fun, so I did that, but outside of that, like, I've lurked a little bit where I'm just checking it out. And I have a screenshot of my phone, which is I was just randomly watching it. And I think it was, I think it was Bill. He got like, I don't know, probably a 7.9 with ZV or something. And then in the chat, people are like, like, oh, Anthony Brooks CV. And then you, F Zemdex, is like, Brooks last layer in the And that is my home screen cover to remind it's me funny. to get to work, man, because. It's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, there's only there's only like three, there's only like three or four songs in like some finals. I, I guess it would be in US Nats like 2015, uh, 2016 as it well. Was, it was 2016 and 2017 that I messed up. If that's what you're remembering, <laughs> the, the Brooks Last Layers. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I remember 20, like 2015, 2015, 2015 is when I killed it. And this is interesting yeah. because I hadn't started learning ZV. I just, I mean, I've always known a lot of algorithms and I happened to use a ZV on, I believe my final solve at US Nationals, which secured me like third place. And I yeah. killed it. And that video is cool. I'll, I'll give a quick thing that I've never mentioned before, but if anybody goes and looks at that video, it's, it's on my Instagram, I guess. Um, uh, it, at the very end of it, like, Okay, so it's me and Lineback, who we love, obviously. Got a quick shout out to Eric Lineback. Don't know if he's there right now or not, but we'll give him the shout out. And also real quick, because this came down my mind. He's Sorry, he's sleeping? He's what? Streaming. Oh. oh, he's streaming. I thought you said stripping. I was like, well, I mean, Lineback, I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> I, I would watch that Twitch stream, but... <laughs> um, Totally just lost my train of thought. Wait, so you were saying that, that well, 2015 solve, last solve, ZB. Yeah, 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 yeah. Quick thing. Yeah. Uh, one of my friends watching, um, his name is Marcus. It's his birthday. So happy birthday, Marcus. Um, yeah. So um, at the end of that video, I'm like, I'm pretty pumped. Lying back there, you see him in the video. We were like side by side at the Nats. And then I start like pointing out people in the crowd or, or somebody in the crowd. I'm like, oh, you like that. And that was Chris Tran. Chris Tran yeah, no, was, I know that. I was freaking out. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, I remember. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, <laughs> it was those 2016, 2017 ones which kind of became a meme. Just like heroing and whatever else. So. Yeah, totally. So you got memes, memes back. Yeah, um, yeah, no, I, and, and I'm, I'm about it. Um, I, I guess I'm just from the perspective that like, I genuinely want to reach the point I know I can with ZB, which for me personally is like, I know I can like consistently average sub seven using ZB and I'll get there. It's just, man, it's been a grind. Like just, just cause there's so much variance, you know what I mean? To like consistently be like sub seven is difficult. So it's, it's been a lot of work and, um, Anyway, uh, I guess where I'm going with this, what I just wanted to throw out here real quick is I've always talked openly about ZB with you, but I haven't really spoken in depth about it online. So what I wanted to include in this 
um, which is partially inspired by a Jaden McNeil video I saw recently. Jaden was, uh, he, like, I'm watching this video, and he's talking about, uh, he's working on ZD, and he started talking about, like, specifically what he was trying to work on in terms of, like, ironing out some of the efficiency. And when I saw that, I was like, okay, he's on the right track, because exactly what he was talking about, it's like, it's stuff that I've worked on and I do now. And that's when I kind of realized, you know what, like, I wanted, I reached out to Jaden to kind of talk to him. And he's like, oh, I spoke to Juliet, who is one of the fastest female keepers from France, if you guys don't know who that is. Um, and Juliet uses ZV. And just this idea that like, ZV is finally like, not just being taken seriously, it's been taken seriously for a while. But like, people are now getting to the point where they can appreciate it and go more in depth. I, I would, wanted I would, to talk about a couple things, but can, what were you saying? No, I, I would say it's gotten to the point now where it's basically nece necessary. Um, ne necessary to really, really compete. Um, obviously not full ZB and definitely, I mean, not many people are doing ZB F2L type stuff, but kind of TUL as a starting point with solid recognition and good out, which takes a long time, but that really, really helps um, those who know it. Yeah, it, it. It's quite advantageous, particularly, yeah, particularly if you're someone who can do like force edge OL throughout F2L or that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, it's definitely just become more and more ne necessary as time has gone on. I suppose my, my approach to stuff like ZB or an, an, another new ALG set, or even just like Yao. Um, I would say uh, over the years, we've never really been super aggressive uh, in terms of trying to pioneer new things. I'm all, I've always been kind of the second mover. Um, so I guess the, the main example would be Yao on Fallout 4, where uh, I'm not the one who is like, you, like using it, thinks it's better, and then uh, then runs with it. I kind of sat back, watched other people get good at it, and like understood from them that it was better, and then switched. And then they'd switch. Um, ZB, ZB for me early on. Uh, I remember really early on, it was just like I just learned a few CLL subsets, and then kind of took it really slow. Um, and then yeah, just I've just gradually, gradually learned more and more over the years, but. If, but even in the early days, when, when I was, like, I, I felt like I was really, really good at only, like, you know, 12 or 24 different cases. Um, yeah. And when I got those, it was, it was awesome. Um, and so, if, yeah, maybe, like, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 13, or so, when I was, like, you know, really, really learning some of those T's. And I would say, for me, particularly because I was competing so much and, like, really, really concerned about consistency, like, I didn't want to have pauses recognition in myself um that was super, super important to me like i understand that's necessary when you're when you're learning it out but i just didn't want to have that sort of thing in competition like i need it's particularly under, under pressure i know that an alg needs to be super super solid in your in your muscle memory and so having any sort of hesitation or recognition problems um uh was kind of yeah, one of one of my hesitations. But over the years, as I've gotten more confidence with ZB and uh, have seen it's actually it's not ZB LLs in particular, not super super hard to learn. I suppose once you learn more and more algs, it becomes easier as, as well. Totally. Uh, and how the algorithms? Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know. I don't even want to count how many algorithms I've relearned. Like I probably relearned every single one of my ZB algs. Um, and you know, even you even see now, like people making new PLLs, people making new OLLs, um, and people ad adopting them. If that's happening for PLL and OLL, which are literally twenty-one and uh, 50, 57 cases, like uh, yeah, <laughs> the amount of alg development and and potential in when it comes to ZBLL algs is uh, is probably still pretty huge. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. <laughs> that's definitely like i'm not going to say it, like it definitely wasn't a waste of time but like learning algs and then relearning because some of that stuff is only discovered later uh, but when you kind of fig figure that oh you've been wasting half a second 
with this alg for so many years. It's kind of hard. To, it's a bit annoying. So kind of the hesitation is, okay, I just need good algs to learn and I'll, and I'll do it more. And that's definitely been I helped with the speeding up of, of learning some more this, this year and, and last year, I would say, after Worlds. Totally. See, having the, having the confidence that the algs available are decent. Yeah, yeah. So shout out to Juliet. <laughs> And yourself, let me see. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I've, I've looked through Juliet's doc and, you know, it's been a very progressive thing. I, in my opinion, the person who had the first modern ZD doc where the algs across the board were solid, like maybe not amazing, but solid, uh, was Jabari. Jabari yeah, was yeah. the first one to have a good doc. And the doc that I released um, online like four years ago, that was when I met Jabari at a competition. I didn't, I'd never heard of him before. And I happened to be in California and I competed. And somebody was like, hey, there's this guy here. Who, he averages like 10, 11 seconds with ZV. And I was like, what? Like, I want to meet this guy. So I, I was like sitting down next to him, watching him solve with ZV. And yeah, he was averaging around 10 seconds and it was ZV every time. And I was like, whoa. So my initial doc was, it was a collaborative thing where I essentially took his algorithms, um, which he, uh, Jabari didn't create those algs. He basically just went and scoured the internet and got all of the best stuff and then maybe made a couple changes, put them on. And then the doc I released was when I was learning his algorithms, but whenever there was one that I didn't like, both he and I would try and find something better. So then over time, we ironed out bad cases. So then the doc I posted was what I would consider the first, like, the first doc where, like, none of the algs were, like, bad. You know what I mean? Yeah. But then since yeah. then, there's been a lot of innovation, including what I've done but haven't posted. And it's been cool to see people like Juliet, you know, try and just see how far she can push it on her own because... Like, I don't want this to be like, oh, it's just me and my algorithms. Like, that's not what this is about. But that's what it's kind of felt like for a while because I haven't been able to, like, share this stuff. And it's complicated. So, um, well, yeah, accessibility is still super hard. Like, you need to know where to look. Um, and obviously, for example, Juliet's doc at the moment is kind of the gold standard. But... Even then, there's stuff where I'm like, okay, I don't really like this. And then like, there isn't something better out there. And then I just like message Jay and he's like, oh yeah, I use this. I'm like, where'd you learn this? I'm like, I don't know. I just learned it. It's in my, it's like in my brain. Like, yeah. So uh, yeah, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully um, accessibility picks up. Yeah. So, okay. So you mentioned Jay, which kind of, brought me back to what I was getting at earlier. Um, I, as of the last like year, but this has been like, it's, it's continued to evolve and um, this is where I'm at right now. But as of the last year, I finally figured out what my version of ZB really is. Um, because, okay, so the version of ZB that you use, for example, you use UT and L, right? Like if you get one of those cases, well, for the most stuff. part, you know most of those for sure. Um, and, and then maybe some other cases, but like those are the ones that you definitely use, right? Um, and uh, I guess like the thing about the other cases, um, so there's H and Pi, which are just like more difficult to recognize and the house aren't as good. That's like the consensus. Um, yeah, but they're still absolutely worth it. Um, yes, and I'll, I'll explain how they become unquestionably worth it in a second. Um, as far as the Soons go, um, Soon actually has good algs. You just got to find them, but they're good algs. Yeah. Anthony Soon, though, sucks. And I have literally, like, I've spent so much time trying to get Anthony Soon workable. And, like, I have good algs, but, like, it's just not worth it, especially when Anthony Soon, for me, is my fastest OL. Like, that's always been, like, it's like the best thing to get to take you to PLL, you know? Um, so this is ZBAB. What it is, is, uh, so you use UTNL for H and Pi, 
you have to use the U2 angle as well. So if a case pops up the U2 that's away, that's what? Yeah. That's very sensible, yeah. So if it's a U2 away, you recognize it from there as its own case. And oftentimes I have a better alg from the U2 angle than I do the other angle. So I have a lot of old algs for that. So ZBAB is UTL, H and pi from the two angles, soon mm. from the one angle, but if soon pops up where it's at a, a recognition angle, that's not like the AUF you need where it's searing you in the face. If it's anywhere else, just do a soon and get PLL. So, because my, my, my rationale there, which I'm sure you'll get talking about pausing and all that, is if you get to soon and you see it's a soon, but you can't tell which soon it is, you don't want to AUF and then recognize the soon. That you, it doesn't, it doesn't work, right? And then there's, there's the whole point about um, like knowing what OLL you'll get during your last F2L pair. Like if you can see that, okay, my last F2L pair is these seven or eight moves, but it's going to give me a soon from this angle. And like, what's, like I'm not going to pause and recognize. I'm just going to do the, do the pair and then do the soon immediately. Yeah, yeah. So if, if, you, if you see the soon and you don't see the ZB, definitely do the soon, 100% way to go. And then anti soon is just always do anti soon. So I don't use anti soon. So um, then the next thing, here's the other key for, I like that you called it ZBF2L because that's what it was always called, right? But ZBLS, as we know it now. Um, uh, although what I'm about to describe actually does sound more like ZBF2L in a way. Um, I've experimented a lot with ZBLS, um, not just when the pair, the final pair is on the right side, but also when it's the left slot as yeah. well as the back right slot. Yeah, yeah. Now, I, I like that this is all like clicking in your head. So let me just get this out so then you can talk about it because I'm really excited to get your take on it. Um, uh, so in what I've discovered, um, when you're working with the right slot, owls are actually great for the most part. Um, I have really good owls and a lot of that maybe comes down to a little bit of preference and um, it takes time to figure out what's actually going to be comfortable in the flow of a solve. So I've really worked a lot on making that a reality for me. And then at this point, ZBLS on the right and ZBLS on the left are both pretty refined for me. So as long as my final pair is in the front, I don't rotate. As far as the back right slot, I was just exploring that because you kind of have to explore everything if you're a first mover. Um, and the back right slot, it's just... As far as recognition goes, there are some really good cases and really good algs, but ultimately recognition is weird. And to do that rotation where you're popping it over, like that's like a good rotation to make. It's a better rotation to do a Y than a Y prime. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. For a right-handed dominant turner, yes. Because as you're turning, as you're rotating the cube, you can set up, you can regrip your right hand to on bottom or whatever. Yep, yep. So, yeah. so as far as the back right slot goes, I think it's worthwhile to just rotate to the right and do it normal. Um, but I think there's a huge benefit to also having the left slot. So, I mean, I remember you were one of the guys from way back in the day that I remember talking about, um, you know, I can't remember where you said this, but you basically said that like your final pair is in the front right, something like 70% of the time, and then it was in the left, like 20%, and then somewhere else, like 10%, right? Yeah, that would have been based on probably breast, a breast reconstruction of like an average of 100. Some, some um, I guess the, the idea being that, yeah, it, it's kind of something you, you tell people as they're you know, improving their F2L, like try and solve things in the back so that, you know, you don't have to look there or like, you know, that they're solved. So everything else will be much more visible. Um, but I guess that that also applies also to ZBLS. Yep. Yep. Because I think one of the big hesit hesitancies with ZB as a whole is you have to force the edges in order to get the ZB, right? Um, and the algs were just so bad for ZBLS, like even worse than ZBLL, right? Like it was just, they were so bad that it's like, okay, 
I'm really going to disrupt the flow of the song to try yeah. to do this at the end of F2L, right? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, yeah, that's the part which, which you've done a lot of work on that mm, doesn't seem like many others have really implemented at all, is, is the ZBLS. It's kind of like, okay, you try and orient some edges during F2L, don't, like, I think the, the consensus at the moment is, you know, most of the fast people who use ZBLS, like, yeah, try and orient some edges during your F2L if it doesn't harm your solve in any way. But if you don't get all edges oriented, just do all of PLL. Um, yeah. 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 But um, maybe I, that's, uh, that's your domain. I'm, not, <laughs> I'm still working on the UPNL. Well, yeah. And I, I mean, another thing, you mentioned this a minute ago, but you finishing F2L and already knowing like your OLL stuff, that's something I, I remember in person, like in Brazil, I was going in depth about that with you. And I was like, so you're telling me like, and I, I just did random solve up to the final pair. And I was like, and it was a random F2L pair. I was like, so from here, you know what OLL you're going to get? And you just looked in, you're like, yeah, it would be. And then I don't remember what case it was, but you knew exactly what it was at the right angle. And to this day, that's mind blowing to me because <laughs> <laughs> like, by doing what I have worked on, um, I see things in the cube that, like, w when I look at, like, if I set up something random, when I look at a case, like, what I see is different from what other people see, right? Um, as far as F2L goes, man, like, what you see is, like, next level. Like, I can't, like, I that's something I've really struggled with in terms of, like, predicting OLL from F2L, like that is so hard for me to see. Right, yeah, that's something I've also really struggled to like teach and articulate. I remember for a good like week, I, know I went on this, uh, this cubing tour in 2017, Latin America speed cubing tour, which was super, super epic. But I remember Jeremy Fleischman like practicing for a week, just like three movers. I, I was like, oh, just, just try, try and see what, if you can predict it with just three movers, like are you R prime, are you U prime, R prime. And even after like after a week of like okay, doing just three move setups, trying to predict his OLL, it was still like it was still, like this is this is so so tricky. So I don't know I don't know like that, that's where you start obviously is can you predict it from, from a three mover? Um, but doing it from okay, a seven or eight mover, I really struggled to like teach slash articulate that. Um, yeah, I don't know. yeah, it's cool, man. It's really cool, obviously. Like, I've always thought that's like one of the dopest things about your solves because, like, when you talk about pausing and not wanting to pause, I mean, always like your solves are the ones where it's like so often. I mean, okay, things are kind of different now, um, in terms of like TPS and like what is considered a pause, but back in the day, your solves seemed like pause to all of us. So that's like, it was like a superpower. And I, I guess now I'm working on TV to be like my superpower, capitalizing on what I'm good at. Um, and also now that we're talking about like F2L, like I've always, F2L has been my strong suit. Um, I've never been that great at last layer. I've known a lot of algorithms, but in terms of like actually executing them at like the highest possible speed, you know, where like, my last layer OLL PLL is like low two seconds. Like that's been really difficult for me. Um, I was always like kind of above average, but not great there. But then my F2L would carry me. Um, so now with ZB, it's like, okay, well, if I can incorporate ZBLS in a way that's not gonna mess up my F2L, and then I can actually recognize these ZBs quickly and use an ALG that I can execute quickly, consistently, because that's another thing. The algorithms I've found for ZB, the ones I'm using now personally, like I have a master list with like multiple cases for every case. Um, and then I also have my list, which is like what I personally use right now. Um, and my personal list, those are the algorithms that I feel most comfortable with in terms of like maybe one of these other algorithms might be like 0.1 faster at top speed but it uses like some really weird finger trick or move or something, I will opt for the one that's 0.1 slower, but I can nail it at that speed every single time. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. This is something 
De definitely over the last few years, but something I mean that's a common common conversation is you know generally my advice and what I what I implement as well is like use the algorithm that you're most consistent with, not necessarily the one that your max that that you max out to like uh, mm -hmm. that you minimize in terms of like your best ever time on the app. Because um, yeah. yeah, consistency is important. I, I guess this is very much from the perspective of trying to be able to do it well under pressure. Like basically everything I know, I'm like, okay, I want to be able to like execute this, have a, have a good chance of executing this well in like a world championship final or the US nationals final. Um, and so if I can't even do something consistently at home, there's absolutely no hope that I'll, I'll be able to do it in, in that sort oh, of situation. Oh, that's home, Felix. It's so true. It's so true. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, but yeah. Um, it, but, but so then, yes, I'll say what you want. What do you want? Man, put your mask on. All right. Sorry. Is that your brother? Yes, it is. Um, so what were we saying? So ZB, okay. ZB, ZB covered ish, I guess. There's infinite ZB stuff. Yeah, the infinite stuff. Um, it's, it's, more, it's more and more mainstream, which is cool. Um, I guess for the for the ZBLL side, it's cool that it's become less intimidating. I think much much less intimidating. Like like you're saying with the Chris Tran stuff. I'm like, well, how do you even learn like you know twenty four hours yeah. for, it, for the same case? Like they all look the same, and yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, learning the algs now because the algs are good and. A lot of them are, yeah. You know, a lot of stuff is similar. There's triggers, etc. Yeah. And I, you know, once you know algs, you, you become better at learning them. And then the recognition side for for TU and algs, for example, is not super intimidating you know, for someone who's like you know sub seven, sub eight. I think. Um, so that's cool. Um, I'm sure it'll just continue to trend that way. I don't. Know, I don't think Max uses very much, but Max is a, is a different case. Isn't it? He's just so 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 fast and um, never locks up on any of his other algs. And he's even more pauseless than, you know, the, he's more pauseless than anyone else. Like, he just goes instant, instant after all, instant all, instant PLL, never locks up, executes super fast. And so that's a special case. I don't think everyone has those powers. <laughs> yeah, I feel, yeah. 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 That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it's funny. I was just in the back of my head. I was thinking what I'm going to do with this ultimately, because I guess when this finishes, I'll, I, I think what I'll probably do is I'll post it to save it, and then probably archive it. And then I think, at some point in time, who knows, I might like splice specific parts of this conversation into something else. So okay. <laughs> whatever it was. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, well, um, I mean, I, I think we've kind of hit like, what I wanted to hit. Uh, I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to chat about for a second, or if you need to go and do your thing. No, I did no preparation, but I'm also completely free. So I don't know if you have any other stuff that you kind of thought about in terms of ideas that's interesting interesting to chat about. Um, how about how about this? How about um, I, well, okay, real quick, while we're still online, I'll scroll through the, the comments real quick, just to take a look at what people are saying. But I think, I think, um, <laughs> middle where like everyone like people got kicked out or something i don't know what happened because i remember at, like when my video dropped off it, it was like 100 people and then when i when i came back it was like tens. i don't know what happened when if people got kicked out or whatever but. oh okay well either way we'll have the footage so it's all good um yes uh <laughs> saw a comment by bill earlier yeah um i i, I think uh maybe we just leave it as is for now. And then this has been, this is fun, man. So I don't know, maybe if I end up splicing this into something and people like, you know, like this and there's good feedback, maybe we do this again in like a couple months or something. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I'm sure there's infinite, infinite cubing topics to, to talk about. Uh, cool. That sounds like a plan. It sounds like a plan. Thank okay, you for having cool. me. Yeah, totally. I, I'm scrolling through the comments now. It seems like people love this, so. That's cool. Yeah, hope everything's well. 
Yeah, man, it's been a weird year, but I've been like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been really like just keeping busy, like keeping like, really busy um, with like stuff. I mean, a lot of stuff is like things that I wouldn't necessarily have had time to do this year if things weren't really weird, you know. So I'm just trying to take advantage and make the best of everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'd, say, I'd say the same. Trying not to spend too much time just lying around at home, uh, but we're still we're still locked down for a little while. Uh, so who, who knows what's going to happen? Um, oh yeah, I, I heard I'm, that. I'm, I'm very much I'm very much missing like I, I, I kind of said it's, it's a nice break to not have to compete for so long, but then that also turns into okay, I'm not really motivated to practice you know other sorts of events. Um, apart from just three by three. And so these, these online competitions have been quite nice because I love, I love competing. Uh, and so I'm kind of, I'm kind of missing that. So I don't know, probably, hopefully next year, early, early next year, we'll have some, start having some competitions and stuff again. And um, obviously missing all, all the travel. Yeah. Yeah. This is the first year since 08 that I'm not going to compete because I don't think that's going to happen for me. Uh, you weren't able to in the first couple months. No, right. and somebody posted in that um, WCA statistics group, they posted something which was like, um, what is like the longest streak for most consecutive years where you've won a competition since your first competition win? Mm. And when I saw the stat right away. I thought of like you, me, Mots, and Nihau. Those are the names that came to my mind. Um, and then eventually somebody went and did the stats and posted it. And as it turns out, Mots is in the lead with 13 years since 07. Yeah. Next yeah. is you with 12 years. And yeah. then it was me with 11 years. And then it drops down a little bit. I think Mihao had like nine or something. And, um, but, but yeah, then I realized I was like, huh, I was like, wait. I looked and I was like, oh shoot. You're at 12 and I'm at 11 because you won a competition this year. And I was like, oh, no, my streak is going to die at 11. <laughs> Hopefully not. Hopefully not. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, either way, it's, I mean, at the very least, you know, if I modify the statistic and say every year that you've competed, then I'm good to go. So. <laughs> you can always carry the statistic. No, I think... What's the one I was looking forward to? I think I'm not at a hundred gold medals yet, um, and I was very close. So that's the one. I'm, that's that's the next milestone on on Wait, my. Wait, you're not at a hundred gold medals. Oh, for three by three. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think so. It's in the statistics, but I think I remember that was the main one where someone was like, "Oh, you're not going to get that for a while." But at the same time, no one's able to compete and get the five fifty three. So that's that's lovely. <laughs> Man, it's that's uh, yeah, that that's crazy to me that now there. I mean, there are probably what like three people that have a legitimate like shot at getting that record. Would you say? Because it's, it's not it's not like people, ten or twenty. I'd say it's only a few. No, the people that I would be that I would like be somewhat scared when checking results for would be obviously Matt, who came super close this year. Uh, Timon and Leo. Those three, I think, can realistically beat 553, um, given enough, enough chances in the right conditions. Um, it's very, very possible. Um, but it's still, it's still, it's still tricky. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. See, like, I don't anticipate ever getting an official sub six average. Like, I mean, I've had a, I've had a five nine average at home. I just don't think I'll ever do that in comp. But I need to get my six second average. That is, like, <laughs> I, I, I've been cubing so long that like goals that I've set along the way have you know like, it's like oh if you hit a goal, I'm sure it's obviously been the same for you. It's like you hit a goal and then there's the next one, right? So it's always been like the next one and the next one. But for me, it's like. I think finally, when I get sub seven, three by three official average, I'm going to feel really like, see, I'm trying to process how I feel. I, it's just going to be a, like a solid way to like cap things off in a way. Cause like, like you mentioned, like it's actually kind of nice to 
to a certain extent this year to not have to worry about competing. Like it's, it's kind of refreshing just to take that aspect out of it. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I so, wouldn't have learned anything near the amount of outs that I did this year if I had to compete every three or four weeks. If I was competing every, so that, that's, that's handy. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, yeah, sub seven is a, is a, is a big one for sure. Like, okay, I guess the barrier or whatever it is has kind of just changed over the years, you know, there was a time when, when it was you know, only a few people sub 10 and it was a very, very big deal. But now there's been enough time where people are kind of cognizant that, uh, okay, sub six, you know, super, super rare. So after that, sub seven is like, if you get that, it's, it's a big, it's a big one yeah, for sure. For sure. Do you think, see, it's, it's, not, easy. it's not easy. It's not easy at all. Do you, uh, do you think that within the next 10 years, so in the 2020s, do you yeah. think in the 2020s, okay, now let me rephrase this question. By the end of the 2020s, yeah. how many people do you anticipate will have a sub six official average? Oh, <laughs> that's 10 years. Sub six official. Yeah. Because my initially my question was, do you think the top hundred will reach that? And I don't think the top hundred will no. reach that in the no. next. No, I don't think so. No, I would say no. Um. Rami, Rami is in the comments. Oh, shout out to Weston too. I see him there. Rami says sub six five is the real milestone. I think that's like realistically where like the top hundred is going in the near long term. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree. Um, the, the thing about making, like, I feel like I've just made some people ask about making predictions about what's possible on this cube, what's possible on this cube, what's what will the top 100 be? And I always get always get them wrong. I always underestimate um, just how how good people are and how how well people improve and how good hardware gets. And but but like how... 2000, 2010, like compared to now, there's just been so much progression that we've been around for and getting it to the point it's at now. I think it is interesting because like the prediction- I think it's definitely back okay. then, like, it's definitely up, but, but I feel yeah. like we almost like, we have a much, much better understanding at this point. If, yeah, yeah, I agree, I agree. And if you look at like, you know, the curve of, you know, what is the top 100, like the 100th ranked average, it's very clearly like, an exponential decay kind of thing yeah and you know so there there is a, there is a limit so i mean for the question of in 10 years how do you have a sub six average i'd put it like 33 or something okay i don't know all right that that, that guess will will live and we'll we'll see I, I i mean i can't argue with that in any way that seems like pretty realistic to me in terms of like that's like, because I don't see it being more than like 50. Like I would, I would err closer to like 20 than 50. But then on, on the other hand, I'm also like, okay, I'm able, I, I like, I've done it a bunch and I think there's so many problems with my soul that like it's, it's, it's surprisingly, like in my mind, it's still surprisingly doable and achievable and so i guess we have enough shots at it people can do it maybe maybe i'll bump it up like uh, 40. That, that's true because the thing is like ultimately if people have tons of shots which for example in 2010 compared to now there are so many competitions now so let's say eight years from now competitions are even more frequent where top guys are getting even more shots at it then then at that point now it does start to become realistic in my mind that 50 people could get you know a 5.9 average or better um with enough tries yeah yeah uh it's just so it's just so hard to predict <laughs> yeah yeah but, but we're definitely it, like you said we know much much more now than that limited knowledge in the early days and can make much better predictions about what, what kind of what kind of times are possible and you kind of see the, the decay on that that hundred ranked um, average in WCA and so there is a limit but at the same time it's like 
even if you, even if you look at certain parts even with dollars, there's still so many mistakes all the time. No, well, except for Max, he's perfect, but and everyone else, people make so many, so many mistakes, um, and so the the potential is absolutely there. Um, yeah, maybe maybe it's more like forty people with some six in a decade, but who knows? No one knows. Yeah. Cool. You know what? I so in my head right now, I started to like have a couple questions that are sort of color neutrality based, and I think instead of us chatting about that now. Um, what I will say is I've been like for the last like year and a half, I've been slowly working on color neutrality. Um, because, you know, I was always blue cross. I didn't even do green. And then about two or three years ago, I started dabbling with green, but like I never felt comfortable with it. And then for the last year and a half, I've been doing, well, at first it was blue, green, white, yellow, um, not doing red and orange. And Actually, as of recently, like the last few months, I have been doing red and orange. And overall, like my times are super inconsistent. Like on any of the colors, I could get a seven pretty easily if when I'm solving, the pairs stand out to me in some way. But the issue I have is when I'm working with a color like orange, it doesn't jump out to my eyes. So it's really easy for me to lose track of what it is I'm seeing. And then look ahead is just dead. You know what I mean? So yeah. instead of diving too in depth, um, I'd be curious just based on that, what advice you have. And then I'm going to continue practicing this. And then maybe we can chat about it down the road. I mean, there's also the point about, you know, if you do four colors, you get pretty much all the benefits of CN. You get like most of the benefits of CN. And then there's the whole inspection argument, right? So if you have a set of not so decent scrambles, the white cross solvers have kind of an inspection advantage to to an, to an extent. Um, you see, you often see like the, the biggest um, problem with with color neutral solvers, particularly in like kind of pressure situations, is they take freaking six or seven seconds to pick a cross or like look around the cube and there's nothing easy. Like color neutral solvers are just they need a good cross to be able to, be able to solve well or, or solve confidently. Um, and so there's kind of a mindset thing um, uh, where white cross solvers have an advantage in certain scenarios, uh, I, I would say, when it comes to inspection, dealing with harder crosses, um, which is definitely, I mean, something you think about, but I, I guess on balance, it, obviously, color neutral is better, but there's always that element. So if you get like white, yellow, blue, green, I wouldn't say that that's wildly different. Like, if you if you're finding it just so so difficult to add red and orange, I think you pretty much get all the kind of move count benefit from from white, yellow, blue, green, and it makes your inspection life a little bit easier. Um, and then maybe you just say, okay, I'll only do red or orange if it's like two moves, and then you trust that you're able to see two pairs in inspection, and the rest of the F12 look ahead is, is decent. Like I don't, you don't lose much, and you could argue, argue, argue that you actually gain from having that approach, rather than beating, like trying to spend hours and hours and hours practicing orange cross and never getting anywhere. Gotcha. Um, I think that that's perfectly legitimate. So, okay, two thoughts I have. One is, so when you're touching upon like white cross solvers, single cross solvers, um, having an advantage sometimes, you know, in pressure situations where you can devote your inspection. Um, what that, that's actually one of the things that is motivating me right now, because I realize that I've just done blue cross for so long that it is so ingrained. And in terms of like, if I'm trying to see the cube, like Felix Zendegs, where I just see everything happening at once while I'm turning and I, I feel like I'm in total control of the cube, like I can hit that on a really good solve with Blue Cross. Um, the others aren't there. So I think if I can get additional colors up to snuff where it's like, okay, as long as I can predict first pair and then hopefully get to the point of, because I don't often see two pairs. Like if it's easy, then I see it. But if it's not, it's hard for me to see two. Um, if I can get to the point where that's more regular for me, then that would be great. Because then it's like, 
is there an easy cross? Yeah, it's yellow. Okay, let me focus on yellow and I can do it. But if there's nothing easy, I just default to blue. And I have, I have become yeah. a master of dealing with like shitty cross situations. You know what I mean? Like it just dealt with it. So I, funny story. I just remembered um, in Brazil, we were racing and I was like, hey, Felix, um, just out of curiosity, like, do you mind racing where you only do blue cross? <laughs> do you remember this or no? No, I don't, but I probably wouldn't have been happy with it. You weren't. You were like, uh, you, you were like disgusted with like the thought. But you're like, all right, fine, fine. So I don't think it lasted more than like five or ten solves. But yeah, you did blue. I, I guess. My guess is what happened is, if it was a hard cross, it was probably quite close. And if it was an easy cross, my guess would um, be. Yeah, I mean, I don't remember exactly how it, how it went. Like any time I've raced you ever, it's always been a situation where like. I can win like a couple out of 10, like on a good streak, maybe I win five out of 10, but like, it's always been like, you're significantly faster. So I, I don't think that even balanced out. But the interesting thing that I remember from this is when you were trying to like, figure out the crosses, you kept saying like, oh man, like, what do I even do here? Cause you're not used to dealing with those situations. And there yeah. are a lot of options in terms of how you do it. and. For yes. me, because I have to do with, deal with blue, it's like when I have a bad cross, I see many different ways of doing it. And then the way it works for me is I'm, I don't even try to figure out like what's the fastest way to do it. I'm trying to figure out which of these ways of solving the cross is going to set me up with a good start for F2L. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly, exactly. And that's that's what I would apply for. Um, that's what I would say for color neutral as well. Like I, Again, everything I'm trying to do is I'm trying to set, get a good setup for F2L not necessarily a super easy cross, but that, that, that skill and ability, like trying to do that when the cross is hard, when the edges are in bad places, is not something that color neutral solvers are that good at, I would say. Mm. Where, yeah. where the synchronous have an advantage. And then there's, yeah, then there's the, the inspection part of just wasting inspection time and panicking, uh, potentially, which is, I, I think that's kind of somewhat fixable, uh, but it's still, there's, there's definitely, it's not just, oh, car neutral is infinitely better in all situations because you can, you can pick the easiest cross. And yeah, there, there's a lot of nuance. Yeah. But good for you, like, I mean, I, I, dual, dual neutral is probably a no brainer, to be honest. Like, the advantages you get from picking between two are pretty huge. And then adding a couple of extra helps a bit. But if you can get to a situation where it's like, okay, um, you can confidently do orange and red if it's a super, super easy cross, then sure. But otherwise, just stick, stick to the other four, then yeah, it's also valid. So part of why I'm trying to play around with orange and red right now and get better at them is because, um, I mean, the same thing you're saying where if you do four of the six, you get basically all of the benefits. Um, that was my mentality going into practicing blue, green, white, yellow. I thought, all right, that'll suffice great. And... You know, it's been going well. Um, I started adding red and orange because, well, it doesn't matter why, but there are a few reasons why I started to try. And I made a discovery for me, which was um, when I forced myself to do orange and red solves for a little bit, then when I switched to the crosses I'm more comfortable with, even, even not blue or green, like white or yellow, me practicing red and orange and really struggling to see what the heck is going on, it made switching to like yellow or whatever when there's one for that. Like, I was like, huh, this flows a little bit better. Like, I'm seeing it. And then, like, to take it even a step further, it's like, then when I go to blue, it's like, then when I switch to blue, it's like, wow, like, it's like putting glasses on. I was blind before, but now I can see. <laughs> yeah. So, and I have had, it, had, it has been, it was a good experience, me switching from white yellow to full color neutral on 4x4 for um, Yao. Yeah, I was able to really get a good appreciation and a good sense of, ah, oh, okay, this is, what it's, this is what it's like, not being able to, to do that. Inter well, okay, so what did you think of that? Like, what was your experience there? Sweet. Uh, I think it was, it was advantageous because I was already, like, color neutral on 3x3. It was just yeah. a matter of you know, effort, the time and effort. And I kind of did it two at a time because four, four, you have to really know your center scheme inside out. 
um, I kind of had to do it blue green and then red yellow and really get the center scheme subconscious. Okay, wait. So that's interesting. So you you practiced it like a couple centers at a time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I initially, like for uh, you know three or, for four three or four years, four years probably, I was just white and yellow for four by four, um, which is the equivalent of dual neutral. To be honest, um, and the advantages of I guess an easy start on four by four not that huge, but it's it's still nice. And then yeah, what I did was just I just did green, blue, and then orange, red. But it was still like, I was just able to gain that appreciation of like, oh, this is what it's like. It's not that easy. Um, yeah, it's weird. <laughs> who, when yeah. you started, who do you remember that was color neutral? Because there weren't a lot of guys that were really. You know, it, was it was just for a Hesla. Yeah, you're right. It was pretty much. Was it just row, like, pretty much? I think you might. Like, I don't really remember who else. Was that's it just row? Like that's row the only like, one, one I remember. And even back then, like you, people would have debates, so many debates um, around, oh, is it, is it even worth it? Um, and, and really questioning that. And I don't know. It was, it was, it was interesting. Yeah. But I think it's a lot more common now, being colony. Well, especially amongst the top, the top few. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I, it, but back then, back then, it was just me and Brian. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Wow. It, I guess I, I just over the years have forgotten the days when it was just rose. Because obviously, when you started doing color neutral, everybody knew you were color neutral, and then more people started to slowly do it. Um, but pre Felix. You're right. I can't think of anybody that was like competing at a high level, color neutral, other than Roe. Huh. There's probably someone obviously we're missing, but that's what I'm saying. I'm like, was it just Roe? Like, I can't remember who else. <laughs> yeah. Wait, was Nakajima? No, Nakajima was neutral. No way. No. No, I don't think so. No, no, Nakajima wasn't. Nakajima wasn't. No. What about Thrall? Thrall. <laughs> Hey, I mean, truthfully, he probably was like, you know, a trendsetter with that, considering uh, his status in the community at the time. You know what I mean? Like a lot of people, I used to watch the Ross. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm really trying to think about who else was color neutral. And then when it, when did it become like more and more popular? I'm trying to think. I mean, if we fast forward to like 2012 kind of thing, 2012-ish is when I think back to like nationals that year. Like I think of guys like Colin Burns and stuff like that's, that. That's the name I was thinking. I'm like 2014, 2015. Okay, like Colin's Colin neutral now. Yeah, cool. But even still then, not that many people. It was really only 2017 onwards when it was, you know, you saw Max do it. Oh, Bill, Bill Wang, Bill Wang, Bill Wang. Yeah. As well. As well. For sure. And then it's like, okay, everyone's coming. You're like Max, Felix, Bill, Nam, Timon, Leo, etc. And yeah. then you have the guys like the Vyas and Luke, Lucas, who are the main single or dual crosses, I would say. Okay. This is something that, I that ratio, that ratio that ratio has really, really shifted over, over probably only over the last three years, three, four years. Um are both of the buyers white only? Mm, yeah. I don't even know. It changes all the time. That's what I, I feel like. like it does one, of them will, one of them will practice yellow for a while, and then be like, "Oh yeah, I'm really motivated practicing yellow," and then be like, "No, nah, it's trash. I can't do it." <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. I remember, remember there was the Euros 2016 story where that last scramble was really, really had a really, really easy yellow, and we were watching. I was we were I was at Kevin's place. And we were watching the finals. I'm like, I don't know. I, I don't think Phillips that good at yellow, but maybe he'll do it on this really, really easy yellow scramble because he need he needed like like a low seven to to get the win. And he did white. He like, looked at the scramble. Oh my god, did white, lost. Um, but then he, he's, he we were like, oh, okay, did, did you try it on yellow after? He's like, yeah, I tried it. I got a twelve. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't I don't think it, definitely not definitely not Phil. 
Sebastian maybe. But they're they're in the they're in the max max park category of just super super consistent turning, pauseless solves. Um, Yeah, that's interesting. Like, I would love to get their take on how they, because I'm trying to think of it from like a Blue Cross perspective, single color, and it's like, to get the consistent times that they get, I'm just like, how do they handle the start of their solves? Because yeah. it's tricky. It's tricky. Yeah, I don't get it. I don't get it. And he's, and it's particularly Philip, his, his inspection, he, he seems to plan at least from talking to him and watching him, he plans as much as I do in, in inspection. And he inspects quicker and he does one cross. So pretty pretty powerful. Yeah. But you can you just get him get him on your on your Brooks chat stream. <laughs> I'll gladly watch. Sounds good. Sounds good. Cool. Yeah, well this has been a great chat. Thanks for doing this, Felix. No worries, no worries at all. Um uh, yeah, very entertaining. Absolutely. Any any time, any time. Uh, but I think we we covered a lot. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well, uh, let's let's call it for now. But we'll we'll chat soon. Sounds good, Anthony. Uh, have a good evening, and uh, hope you're staying safe. Yeah. Yeah, I am. And I Melbourne is still like on a complete lockdown, right at the moment. Uh, yeah, it's kind of dumb, but don't get me started. <laughs> okay, yeah, well, one way or another, we're, trying, we'll stay, we're but... not allowed to we're not allowed to exit the lockdown until there's uh, less than five cases per day. Less than five cases. Five new cases per day. <laughs> in in like your state. In, in Melbourne, uh, yeah, in the state of like seven eight million people. <laughs> There's a bit of nuance to that, um, but that's, that's, I think that, that's roughly what they're going for. So who knows? Gotcha. Uh, Western says, tell us what you're trading. Uh, I, I left the trading firm working for the government um, now. Uh, I'm, so I'm, I'm not trading anything. But I was on, on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. Good fun. Good fun. Uh... Just taking a quick look at the comments. I know Ed, Mr. Ed Hollingdale's been in the chat a bit. That's cool. Ed asked how much ZB I know. Probably half. Um, hmm. Man who does see up. Remember me. I need to look. I probably need to look at the picture. I remember people's faces, but not their name. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, anybody that's still in the chat right now, um, if you have any questions, you can just DM me whatever questions you have. And next time we do this, maybe I'll, you know, run some of these questions by Felix or chat about it and whatever. So, that's all right, good. guys. Yeah, me as well, but I, I, I'll try to get back to you as much as possible. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, Felix. Take it easy, man. You too, Anthony. Thanks. Good chat. Good chat. Yeah. Cool. Bye. Bye.